And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, September 19th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com, and here are some of those news stories for the day. Members of New Mexico's congressional delegation are pushing for the extension of a program that works to preserve Native American languages. U.S. Representatives uh, Marion Heinrich, Ben Ray Lujan, and Steve Pierce introduced legislation this month, month to reauthorize the Esther Martinez Native American Language Act for another five years. The act provides grants to support language immersion programs. It's scheduled to expire at the end of this year. Pierce says native languages are a valuable part of New Mexico's culture and represents an important piece of the American story. Since 2000, 390 grants worth nearly 50 million have been awarded through the program. The act was originally authorized in the year 2006. It's named after a woman who taught the Tiwa language at a local Pueblo and helped develop language preservation strategies throughout the Southwest. The Madden Island Museum plans to celebrate the signing of a treaty that created Ojibwe reservations in Wisconsin. The museum's Treaty Days events is designed to commemorate the Treaty of 1854, which established the reservations and guaranteed the Ojibwe's right to hunt and fish on land they ceded to the government in perpetuity. The treaty was signed at La Pointe, a town on Madeline Island, the former homelands of the Ojibwe Nation. The event is scheduled to run from September 29th through September 30th. It will feature Ojibwe music and art and exhibit on Ojibwe treaty rights in a film documenting the Sandy Lake tragedy of 1850. Hundreds of Ojibwe people died that year after traveling to and from Sandy Lake, Minnesota after U.S. officials told them their annual payments would be distributed rare, there rather than at Madeline Island and at La Pointe. Wisconsin wildlife officials have decided who can hunt wolves this winter. Department of Natural Resources uh, officers say 20,272 hunters, including 486 from outside the state, applied for a permit to hunt or trap wolves. The DNR chose 1,160 applicants through a random computer lottery this week. The agency says 1,145 Wisconsin residents and 15 non-residents won authorization to buy a permit. They cost $100 for state residents and $500 for non-residents. The first season is scheduled to begin October 15th and runs through the end of February. The DNR rules enacting the hunt call for a total statewide quota of 201 wolves. The state's Chippewa tribes have an exclusive right to take 85 of those permits, leaving 116 for state licensed hunters. The Cherokee are planning to spend nearly $100 million to build an indoor adventure park to lure families year-round to a territory now home to North Carolina's only gambling casino. The Asheville Citizens Times reports the Eastern Band of Cherokee plan an activity center offering rock climbing, zip lines, restaurants, shopping, and a 300-room hotel. The tribe aims to have it open within two years. Eastern Band Commerce Director Jason Lambert says the tribe has been working on the concept for years. The aim is bringing families to Cherokee and making the mountain region a year-round tourist destination. The casino has made Cherokee uh, one of uh, North Carolina's largest tourist attractions. Live dealers began leading game cards, uh, card games last month, a move designed to attract even more gamblers and generate more jobs, hopefully. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has set October 1st as the date it will take control of social service programs on the Spirit Lake Reservation in North Dakota. Interior Department Assistant Secretary Donald Lavender says the BIA in the meantime will work with the tribe to ensure a smooth transition. The move is uh, being made because of criticism that the tribe has failed to protect vulnerable children. The tribe has been running social service programs under contract with the BIA, but starting next month the federal government will administer the programs. North Dakota's congressional delegation has issued a statement expressing approval of the handover. Tribal Chairman Roger Yankton has said most uh, problems predate his administration. A school on the Pine Ridge Reservation is opening an art installation project that examines a congressional apology to Native Americans. 
The Red Cloud Indian School's Heritage Center will feature the project by Oglala Lakota artist Lely Longshoulder later this month. The interactive piece looks at the 2009 apology issued to Native Americans from Congress. The resolution apologizes to Native Americans for ill-conceived policies and act of violence. People will be invited to write or draw their own response to the apology as part of the installation piece. It will remain at the Heritage Center throughout December. A new report shows the number of new HIV cases on the Navajo Nation is uh, way up in recent years. The report shows the number of new cases of the virus that causes AIDS averaged about 10 per year in the 1990s and rose to about 15 new cases in 2000. There were 35 in 2010 and nearly 40 last year. The Farmington Daily Times reports that uh, Indian Health Service, Navajo Nation Health Education Program, and the Navajo AIDS Network Program released the new numbers last week. Both HIV and AIDS rates climbed nationally in the 1980s, primarily in the male homosexual population. The Navajo Nation saw its numbers follow a similar path among gay men a decade later. However, now both Navajo men and women are being diagnosed with the human virus. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us, and y'all come back again soon.